We have six months from that date in which to uh, have a, a trial on the charges. So that will start the speedy trial clock. It's important to note that today's finding is merely a procedural step in the prosecution process. We obviously still have to abide by the rule of law, and that is that all defendants, regardless of charges or steps like this, are presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. And that applies to this defendant as well. Uh, he has not been found guilty of any charges yet. This is, again, just a procedural step, and he is presumed innocent until we get to a jury finding at some point down the road. With that, I would be able to answer some very uh, procedural questions. Uh, obviously, we're not going to get into facts or anything beyond what occurred in the courtroom today. Obviously, everything that occurred in the courtroom today is open to the public, so we can talk about those things. But we do want to protect our prosecution effort in this case to make sure that we can receive and find justice for Samuel and Seeley. So with that, any questions? District Attorney Allen, what charges could you talk about potentially would he be facing? I know uh, there was a lot of evidence that was admissible into, I guess, now the trial is going to be moving forward. Um, could you talk about those possible charges? Were you seeking? Yeah, so we, we filed charges previously, and, and the defendant had notice of those charges. That is two counts of murder in the first degree with intent and after deliberation. Uh, those are the, the charges that we presented evidence on today, and that's what the judge found probable cause to support to bind over for trial, and so that's where we are now. And can you talk about the maximum penalties that those sure. carry? Sure. Yeah, those are class one felony offenses, so those types of offenses carry life in prison without parole if convicted. Mr. Allen, we saw yeah. that um, Sue Montgomery's family was there in the courtroom. Yes. Have you talked with her family at all? Do they have any message that... Yeah, I, I think that kind of stuff is better to save towards the end of, of this process. Obviously, every family member that's involved in, in a case like this is, is struggling with, you know, the suddenness that their, their child essentially has been taken from them. I know that they're struggling with that, and you probably saw a little bit of that in the courtroom today. Uh, but beyond that, I would just want to protect their privacy, and then we can talk about those things when we get further down the road. Appreciate that. Any other questions? Um, earlier today, that was kind of out Sure. Uh, but I did step in at a moment when I heard that there was some activity that happened in the El Paso County Jail. Um, is yeah. that further evidence that you're going to be considering? Yes. Or? Yeah, great question. So there's actually two cases that are pending right now. There's the, the one case that really is focusing on what happened at, on the UCCS campus back in February. And then the second case occurred uh, in March at the uh, Criminal Justice Center, the jail, essentially where uh, it's alleged that the defendant uh, struck a jail deputy over some dispute. So we had to present evidence on that as well. It's a felony offense, and that was also bound over for trial. Again, he is still presumed innocent even on that uh, because the finding here is just probable cause. And is that trial date set for a different date other than October 25th? So it's not trial yet. Uh, we're set for arraignment in October, and both of these cases are set for arraignment on that October 25th date. Great question. Anything else? Okay, great, thank you.